In today's video, I give an overly detailed commentary on how I made this thing. I felt like I needed a table for this video, and I'm all out of tables at the moment. This is my boot lid from when I reversed my car into a tree when I was 17. It was a week after I had the car repainted. It's a good table. I promised I'll make a build video for the cooler drone and here it is. It's going to be kept pretty casual, it's not going to be a step by step guide, but it's going to be some of the things I learned along the way in making the world's first cooler drone that works really well but doesn't actually carry anything and doesn't really work that well. But you know, it flies. And it probably keeps stuff cold if you just leave it on the ground and fill it with ice and then don't fly. It's a good cooler drone, let's get into it. So why did I build a flying cooler drone? Well, first reason was I thought it would actually be a quick project I could whip up over Christmas. <laughs> the other reason was I wanted to make something for a long while which was a drone that kind of looked like it defied physics, like it, uh, it couldn't lift whatever it was that it was meant to be lifting. But then I thought rather than having the drone lifting something else, which has been done heaps of times before, actually have the drone be that thing with the actual drone part of it not really being noticeable rather than like you know the Amazon drone where it's just kind of the package and then the majority of the thing is the drone. Then one day I was in the shed I looked down and there was a cooler and I thought yeah that thing. Uh, so I thought yeah this will look pretty cool the props will be kind of nicely integrated so you don't really notice them and people go what? doesn't look right. So I got wondering how I could make something as light as possible so it could be powered just by a quadcopter, so just four propellers and have them small and almost not noticeable. So I hadn't built a drone before and in doing a little bit of research it seems like there's a fair bit of work in just doing that so you have to select the right propellers and motors, battery system, program it so all the parameters are right and that all seemed like a lot of time and then on top of that I'd have to spend a lot of time sculpting an ultra lightweight physics defying cooler. So a nice workaround seemed to be maybe buying a commercial drone that's already made and all works and then dissecting it down into its basic components. So if I was going to dissect a commercial drone I thought might as well go for a DJI Phantom because I was already happy with how they worked and I knew how to use them and the software was all really good. Now small quadcopter flies awesome when it's a small quadcopter but when you kind of make that bigger into a big rectangular box shape there are so many aerodynamic issues that I thought it would have uh, it would kill the whole project in its tracks. I'm not a space surgeon but from a technical point of view what I, I can kind of say is I didn't know where the props were going to go and if I put them on top and they're kind of mounted up here somewhere blowing down on the box that's not really going to work uh, as far as hovering goes. Uh, and then if it does hover, if the props are around the side here, when you've got this kind of shape, drawing the air around the sides here, then it's like hooking under here. And then you get some turbulence coming off here. Kind of looks like fallopian tubes. This is where the baby goes. And the square bit there. And then if everything is all good and we're up and hovering, a quadcopter goes like this to go forward. So you've got the air hooking down under here, so that's pulling down. Uh, and it's pushing on there and so the faster you go and the more angle it is on it's trying to make you get dead, crashed. And then if we're all good and everything is flying okay it's all going to be extremely susceptible to wind. At the end of the day it all worked out pretty good but one cool thing was because the air did come around here and cause this low pressure, uh, in some of the footage you can see where there's ground the dust comes up in this like tornado thing right here in the middle which is cool, I thought it was cool. To test if the aerodynamics were going to be an issue, I went and got uh, a few seafood container polystyrene lids and taped them together and then strapped them to the bottom of the Phantom 4. It didn't fly very good. It was very dodgy and for some reason I went and bought the Phantom 3 anyway and went about the project still. After getting the Phantom 3, the first step of the project was the actual box design. So I had a loose idea on how I wanted it to work. I knew from the start that I wanted it to be able to land on water, so I knew it'd have to be quite wide at the bottom so it wouldn't just capsize. Now for the position of the propellers, because I did know it would be landing on water, they couldn't be near the bottom because then they'll just be in the water. From a balance and aerodynamic point of view, around the middle would probably be the best place. Uh, but that's when I came up with the idea of having it all nicely around the lid. So it'd be away from the water, 
uh, and all the components would be nicely integrated into this thin section of the lid which I could also hopefully open as one big piece. So you don't want to open the cooler and then there'd be um, a lithium polymer battery in there with your beers. Also wanting it to be able to land on water meant I wouldn't be able to have any camera point of view at the bottom, which just made me sad. I didn't really resolve that one. With the design worked out on paper, I then had to cut up some polystyrene quite accurately. And the best way to do that is with a foam cutting table and looking them up, they're worth about $700 and I didn't want to do that. So I managed to improvise myself a large cutting table in about 30 minutes, uh, and it turned out way better than I thought. So the foam part was pretty hard, like you have to actually have all of your edges and lines all perfectly straight because if you get something wrong, you can't sand large sections of foam because it kind of plucks and pulls and is just, it's just a mess to work with. So you want to get the cuts right the first time. So the big cutting table was, uh, was good for that. Uh, and then if you cut too far in on one section, uh, you can't bog it either because then that would weigh the cooler drone down and then full from the sky crash. The only sanding that I would want to be done is the actual just rounding of the corners. And then with the right glue for the job, I went about gluing all the panels together, holding them in place overnight so they could dry. So when it came to sanding the box into shape, it took some time, but after a while I got to a point where the cooler had become a nice cooler shape. It was then time to strip the Phantom 3 down to its basic components. Now I'd never seen inside a drone before, so I just kind of went for it. I pulled it apart, stripped it down to just the circuit board, uh, the motors, uh, the GPS sensor, uh, compass and battery, then kind of laid it out on the table and thought, how are we going to go about doing this? There was a problem with this plan and that was the battery system itself. Uh, it's our own unique battery system and doesn't have terminals that you can kind of just connect together. So I had to bring back the bottom half of the drone's shell just so it would have the battery clips that clamp onto it. Also when working out the position of all the components I also had to make sure all the centers were nicely marked out so everything balanced nicely because you don't want one motor working harder than another motor because it might overheat or explode or fire shoot out of it. Because most of the components went back in their original positions in the shell that worked out pretty good, except the GPS sensor. So the GPS sensor is at the top of the drone because the satellites are up there in the space area. And there wasn't any room for that because there was no top half of the shell. So I had to work out how to get it into the foam. Uh, foam is difficult because you can't just go to town chiseling it because that's just not going to work. The arms on the drone obviously had to be a lot longer than what they are on a Phantom 3. And I couldn't find a reference to anyone online extending them the amount that I wanted to. So I was a little bit worried that it might be a bit of a project killer if uh, that didn't fly properly because if I had to tweak it, I couldn't tweak the software or anything because it's all locked down in the DJI software things that they have that stop you doing all the things you want to do. Material for the arms on the drone I knew was going to be a bit of a challenge because they had to be as strong as possible so one wouldn't snap and the whole drone fall from the sky. Uh, but they also had to be really light and because they're so far out there's a lot of material you're adding to the drone. And at the hardware store I managed to find some crescent shaped aluminium flat bar which was uh, quite strong. Uh, it didn't flex much uh, and it was quite light as well. And then to try and make them even lighter still I drilled a big series of holes all the way down it but in the end the arms for the drone is one of the heaviest parts of the whole thing so if they were lighter it would actually fly a lot better and probably carry like half a beer more but half a beer more is half a beer more and that's important I couldn't glue the arms directly onto the lid itself because it would be pretty prone to just sort of snapping away so I used some high density foam from the seafood containers just to spread the load out a bit on the lid to add some strength uh, and then I also fiberglassed over the top of the bars just to give it a bit more bite. The thing with polystyrene is you can't use normal fiberglass resin because it just melts it away into nothing. I, I worked out you could actually mix the fiberglass with the PVA and you get a pretty strong result which is kind of cool. I was impressed. So I put all the guts of the drone in place and then extended the wires out for the motors. Now soldering the wires on the Phantoms is actually pretty hard because everything is heavily lacquered. Uh, just something to keep in mind. It's hard to get the lacquer off and it's hard to solder. With all the wiring and internals in it was time to test it out so I chucked the battery in there, powered it up and it didn't catch on fire which was a good thing. So then it was time to put on some propellers and give it a go with them. With the props on it actually has this cool sound it makes when you when you fire it up because the box sort of resonates with the motors and makes this cool car sort of sound. So with the lid just kind of taped onto the bottom part of the box, uh, gave it its first flight in the shed. 
And you can see when I'm first uh, flying and I've got my uh, hyper focus face on, which I seem to get. Uh, and it didn't fly too bad. It hovered, it took off. It's quite messy near the ground because you've got all the turbulence uh, from the props and you've got all the wash from that. So the higher I would get up in the shed, uh, the more stable it would be. It didn't hover too bad, but the only problem was uh, when I'd go to rotate it, or yaw, which is you know, this angle, uh, I would go to go this way and it would go completely the opposite way. So it turns out what the issue was, it was that anhedral, dihedral angle. One of them wasn't quite right, so I just chopped it up a bit more and sort of bent everything into shape a little bit. Uh, and then that was pretty good, it flew pretty well in the shed. Ah, and it landed! And that was it for all of the hard parts of the build. No, of course not. So to make sure the hinge on the lid would work, uh, you had to have something that was quite strong. But you can't have something that's quite strong because then it's really heavy. Uh, so I managed to get some core flute and then just channel it out into the, the shape that I wanted and use that as a nice, strong, full length hinge. I still had the issue with the hinge which was screwing into the foam. So to work around that, I chopped in a series of channels and then filled that with balsa wood just to give a bit of a bed uh, to screw down into and spread out the load as much as I could along the whole back part there. I melted a bunch of holes into the core flute uh, so I could glue it initially and just to give it something to bite onto because glue doesn't stick that well straight onto plastic. And then I also screwed it and then so there was somewhere for the heads of the screw to go, I melted a series of holes so that would kind of close nice and flat. And we had ourselves a nice little lid hinge. Then I was on to working out some sort of latch system for the front. So same issues again, any real latch you're gonna use is gonna be way too heavy. I went for the elastic style arrangement you actually have on real coolers and they attached the arms on the front of the drone trying to keep everything as light as possible because the weight budget was really getting stretched at this point. After the latches were done for the front, I also put some holes in the drone box itself just for a bit of air. I don't know if it really works, but I need to do something because, you know, a drone gets a bit warm when it's operating. And what we've done is we've taken it apart and put it inside a big insulated box, which is probably not the best idea. So my idea was the wind flowing across these holes near where the props are would actually cause a bit of a vacuum on the holes that were above the components to let air down around and through the battery. Then for the other finishing touches on the bottom of the cooler, uh, I sanded in some channels just so it kind of, you know, look cool and like a cooler. And also when it's on top of the water, I figured it would release easier because it would let air underneath. It wouldn't stick to the water as it initially takes off. Because I was worried like it would stick on the water, you'd hit the throttle and then it would just flip over or something. Before painting it, I wanted to get the finish to be, you know, quite smooth looking because polystyrene would look like a bunch of little balls. So I filled it with this lightweight filler and it almost feels like shaving cream and looks like it would be delicious. And I, you totally didn't taste it. Then I was off to the hardware shop and we got them to actually colour match one of the coolers that was down there so we'd get legitimate cooler looking blue. And then basically just rolled it on with a small roller. It's probably two coats on there. Because the paint itself would literally add to the weight of the overall drone. I was weighing it during painting and then you'd get a win after you leave it overnight because it would dry and you'd uh, it would lighten it slightly. I was pretty keen to give it another test so that's what we did with these extra hinges and latches on the front which added some more weight. I wanted to make sure they were holding up to the challenge and it lifted the extra weight. I was happy, everything was working really well. So then there was just the last few finishing touches just to make it look extra coolerish. I made up some handles out of uh, the higher density foam, just sort of sanded them to shape and then uh, painted them up. So you can't actually use the handles. I have to tell people not to pick it up by the handles as well. You've got to pick it up by the arms. If you touch the handles, they break. They're very delicate. You can't touch the handles. Don't touch the handles. A cooler also needs a drain plug. Uh, I used a bit of white plastic from a lid and then a toothpaste cap seemed to look, to look a bit like a little drain. It's got the little flip bit on there as well. And then we're onto its first water test. Uh, it floated quite well. Something that was interesting is because the motors are trying to correct the angle of the drone when it's on the water as well they all sort of rev weirdly trying to keep it flat just as it goes over the waves. Flying it went all right except for the bit where it started coming towards me and then I'm like holding it out like don't come here drone and it's still trying to go towards me but then because my hand is there it's not on the control and just things got worse and then I just sort of just landed it with my hand and it was okay that was that was a bit stressful though that bit 
I had to work out some way of actually being able to put stuff in there because if we put ice and drinks in there just for filming some of the scenes just the weight of that would explode the whole thing because there's a lot of pressure pushing out on it and it's a very fragile structure and I wanted it to look a bit nicer. This is the liner that goes inside the cooler drone itself. Uh, there's some little handles in there so you can lift it out but then we could put ice and bees in there so we could film the scenes where we had ice and beers in it. This, you know, this weighs a ton. There's no way it would actually fly with this in there. So then giving the drone some final tests, there were some issues I was having with the camera not being there. For some reason that relates to how it sends telemetry to your actual phone. So you can still fly it and it still comes up on the phone, but all the information that you get about how high it is, how hot the batteries which I needed to know and all that other stuff you just wouldn't get. So in the end I had to actually install the camera back in there which added more weight again. But for filming the scenes I didn't want to see the camera hanging down when you open the lid. So I would remove it just for filming those scenes and I made up like this veneer of foam that would kind of velcro on. It's like super lightweight and would hide the drone itself just so it's a nice clean looking drone. And then when I was doing the other stuff we would have to fly a bit further, uh, put the camera back in there and then I'd get all that data back on my screen to help me with all the stuff, all the numbers that I wanted to be able to read. And also because it's quite fragile, every time we'd go out filming, it would just get damaged. Just you take off and it, it clips a bit of grass and it would shoot that bit of grass like into the foam or you'd land on a stick and then when it takes off it would lift up that stick. So pretty much each time you'd go out, you'd come back and expect to do repairs. But in the end, the flying experience is all pretty good. Like pretty much what you see in the video is what you get. Like it, um, you know, it's very susceptible to the wind has to be pointing into the wind so it doesn't lose ground. If it turns away from the wind, you kind of have to hook around and then head back into it to try and gain some ground. But it's fun to fly, it's good. I hope you enjoyed this video though, as a bit of an insight into how I went about making the, the cooler drone. Uh, if you're gonna make a cooler drone, go for it. We'll have some cooler drone races. Uh, if you haven't, check out my Patreon. Maybe you can help me make some more frequent videos. My name's Craig Turner, YouTube channel is Turner81. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.